Okay, so continuing right along here today, we have, you'll have to excuse me if I sneeze. I got allergy medicine in me, but I don't know if I got it in time. Okay, for human beings, there's a lack of thankfulness. For members of the body of Christ, we know we can be thankful for all, everything. Because God places it for the experience that we go through to prepare us for something grand in the Ionian times. So we need a healthy, I'll call it a healthy experience of evil to keep us low and to break us to the point of being thankful for everything. The contrast of absolute is beautiful that comes through it. Okay, so this is why we need opposition. Okay, in the garden, of course, the sylvan perfection of Eden, our ancient parents lived in a superb state. Everything around them was described by God himself as being good. Never hungry, never ailing, and privileged to walk and talk in such beautiful surroundings with their maker. Yet in all this splendor, there is no record of any expression of thankfulness. But this is now quite understandable. For without contrast, there can be no appreciation, as we know. What made the Celestials learn from mortality? A great deal. Witnessing the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem, some of these hailed his humanity with exultation and could not contain their joy, overjoyed that God would give our Lord Jesus Christ a human frame, <clears throat> the glorified Christ a human frame. He came and he took on that human frame. <clears throat> With the briefest glimpse, they learn that through the birth of this babe, God's great purpose of blessing will flow to the utmost bounds of creation. During his ministry, our Lord came to realize that the kingdom was rejected. Instantly, he rejoices. In this hour, he exalts in the Holy Spirit and said, I am acclaiming thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for thou dost conceal these things from the wise and intelligent, and thou dost reveal them to minors. Yea, Father, seeing that thus it became a delight in front of thee. Luke 10, 21. Amazing. Thus far, we have not even remarked on the influence of Satan. To what extent is he necessary? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was created by God, but was used by Satan to achieve God's purpose. God's judgment was plain. Yahweh Elohim instructed the human, saying, From every tree of the garden ye you may eat, yea, eat. But as for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you must never eat from it. For on the day you eat from it, to die shall you be dying. The process of death started. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. I'm pretty sure I shared this whole article before. You know, when I read stuff and I think, okay, well, I did this on a previous show. It does not matter. I'm repeating something that's well worth repeating. As we do in the body of Christ, we herald opportunity, inopportunity, we share, and it does not matter if it's repeated because it's important to repeat things in order to be edified and built up. Just saying. In consequence of a disobedience which the humans could not possibly avoid, all humanity are thus disabled and dying. With one stroke, Satan has crippled his victims. But is that strictly accurate? Many of his deeds were in keeping with his character, evil, and opposed to God's revealed will. But what of God's intention? As stated above, many are loath to associate God with any evil. But as previously noted, God is the maker of good and creator of evil. 
The point being made is that while Satan is used on many occasions, we must never lose sight of the fact that his, his is almost a minor role in God's purpose. For example, God creates evil. God ensures that humans learn the knowledge of good and evil. God purposes that Israel reject the kingdom. As the Apostle Peter perceived, Christ was given up in the counsel and foreknowledge of God. Acts 2.23 My nose is doing funky things today. Directly, Satan is used by our Lord during his ministry. Jesus answered and said to them, Do not I choose you, the twelve, and one of you is an adversary. Now he said it, uh, it of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for this man was about to give, give him up, being one of the twelve. John six seventy and 71. It is extremely important to note that this is the one and only recorded occasion when Satan possessed a human being. How profound to note that Jesus who had commanded demons practically every day of his ministry, is heard to declare to Judas, What are you doing? What you are doing, do more quickly. And this, when he knew that Satan had entered into that man. John thirteen twenty seven. Our Lord subjected Peter and the disciples for, for discipline to Satan. Luke 21, 31. Paul urged the Corinthians to give up one of their numbers to Satan for the extermination of the flesh. 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Through a horrifying persecution of the Jewish nation, millions have perished. The motive was, ruth was ruthless, extermination, genocide. <clears throat> but this same dreadful crime has served to drive the people back to the land which God has, has promised. Now it would seem that prophecy is about to unfold the final chapter in preparation for the promised fulfillment of their glory. Yet there is so much more suffering in store for this people. As stated, the celestials have so much to learn concerning God's love. The greatest example of this has been provided at Golgotha. The full meaning of so great a sacrifice has yet to be unfolded. We are those who are entrusted with the, this privilege for, in the oncoming eons, he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 7. Okay, before my nose goes out of whack, I'll let you go and we'll continue tomorrow. This is beautiful stuff. So you can see the absolute contrastive thing that's going on here in God's absolute sovereign universe. Because he is in control of it all. He is scripting every moment. And it is playing out perfectly in his divine plan. And ultimately, love is the big deal. Love. He brings back his universe through his son, Christ Jesus our Lord, our brother, through the ecclesia, which is his body, the entire universe comes back to God in reconciliation of his love for his whole creation, including the adversary, Satan himself. Grace and peace. Okay, here's my boy. Hi. We're pretty darn excited to take this road trip. And uh, we're soon on the road in three weeks. What do you think, Jacob? I'm excited to go. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great, eh? It is. Yeah. It's happening. It's happening. Yay. <laughs> All right.